In the first video on our study of vectors, we saw that there were two different ways that I could combine vectors. I could add them up via this tip-to-tail vector addition, or I could do scalar multiplication where I took one vector and I stretched its length out, say, by a multiple of two. Now I want to look at the idea of a linear combination. So what is a linear combination? Well, it's basically taking the scalar multiplication and the vector addition and then doing them as many times as I wish. I've had many different vectors, a1, a2, a3, this is a list of different vectors living in, say, Rm. I can multiply each of those vectors by different lengths, different scalar multiples, and then I could add them all up together. That's what a linear combination is. So something where I'm doing scalar multiplications and vector additions, and those are my two different operations. Note here that the blue, the coefficients, the scalar multiples, those are just real numbers, number like seven or pi, but then that the yellow, the actual vectors, the a1, the a2, and the a3, these are vectors and they live somewhere, say, in Rm. Note, by the way, that the number of components of the vector, Rm, this is different than the number of vectors that I'm adding up. So I'm saying here that I'm adding up n vectors, and each of those vectors live in Rm. So if I begin with two, say, standard vectors like 2, 1, and minus 1, 1, the ones that we've seen before, then I can take an arbitrary linear combination of them, but how about this? Two times the red 2, 1 vector, and then minus one times the yellow minus 1, 1 vector. And then I could do my arithmetic if I look at the 2 times 2 is 4, minus a minus 1 is 5, so I get this component of 5 up here, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. That's why I get this vector 5, 1, but what does it look like geometrically? Geometrically, this results in the red vector being stretched by this length of 2, it results in flipping the yellow vector around because of the minus one, and I tip the tail addition of it, and I get this orange vector going up to this point, five, one. Now suppose I gave a different vector. Suppose I wanted to go to, say, zero minus two, just to make up one. Well, is it possible that there is some linear combination of the red and the yellow, some combination of the A and B here, that gets me to this zero minus two? That's the question. Can I find, in effect, these scalar multiples, the x1 and the x2, can I figure out numbers for them so that I can align these in some way? Now, I went off on the side and I did some computations here, and I figured out that if I plug in these numbers, minus 2, 3, and minus 4, 3, then indeed this works out. And then geometrically, when I take the red and stretch it by the minus 2 thirds, and I take the yellow and stretch it by the minus 4 thirds, Indeed, it turns out that the tip-to-tail addition of these stretch vectors adds up exactly to 0 to minus 2. So, indeed, the 0 minus 2 can be written as a linear combination of the red and the yellow. Now, I'll leave it to you as a challenge to see whether you could have come up with the minus 2 thirds and the minus 4 thirds yourself. We're going to figure out exactly how to do that in a later video. But my goal right now is just to illustrate how you can take linear combinations of vectors and that geometrically they end up managing to equal some other vector. Now, if I can take linear combinations, I want you to imagine all the possible ways I could take a linear combination. If you gave me n different vectors, a1 down to an, and I looked at all the different ways I could take a linear combination, all the different scalar multiples that I could put there for those n different vectors. Well, then that's going to reach a whole bunch of different vectors on the plane. Maybe all of them, maybe just some of them, I don't know. So I am going to define the span of those vectors to be all the possible outputs, all the possible linear combinations of this inputting a1 down to an. Let's see just a couple examples. Uh, first, the span of the two vectors we've been talking about. Well, we saw that it got to the 5, 1, and we saw that it got to the 0, minus 2, so it's hitting a lot of different vectors. But in fact, it's going to hit all of them. And well, again, I'm going to delay the proof of this particular claim. I want to visually see it in the following sense. If, if I put any point down here, okay, I put some point down there. And then if I go and draw parallel lines to the red and to the yellow vectors, this tells me visually how to figure out the coefficients. I stretch the red vector long enough until it hits that yellow intersecting line, and then I stretch the yellow vector long enough until I get to my point. And so I think we can sort of visually see that in this case, every vector could be reached by some combinations of the red and the yellow vectors. But what about this combo? Uh, here I've given two vectors that overlap themselves. I've got the two one. But I've got the vector 3, 3 and a half, which is just a stretching. It's just 1 half times the original vector. So if I take any linear combination of these, well, I can stretch the vectors as much as I wish. 
and then I can add them together, but they're always going to be on that exact same line. So in effect, that this pair of vectors, the span of two one and three and a half, it's just all multiples of this original two one. It's just on a line. So what we have here is a span that does not have everything. And even more pedantically, what's the span? One vector, the vector that's zero, the, the component, zero, zero. Well, no matter what I multiply that to, we're just going to begin at the origin. So it's, it's possible that you could have the span of the zero vector. It's just one thing, just the zero vector. So it could be everything. It could be a line. It could be just this one particular vector. There's lots of different possibilities. There are two vectors that are so important. I want to highlight them. These are called the standard basis vectors. There are two vectors that are particularly important for us the so-called standard basis vectors. We're not going to worry just yet about why we might call them the standard basis vectors. That's just their name, but why do I like them? So these vectors are the vector 1, 0, and 0, 1. They're just sort of going over one step to the right or one step up. Now, why are they so nice? I imagine I take some other vector to say minus 1, 2. I want to say, well, is minus 1, 2 in the span of the standard basis vectors? Is minus 1, 2 a linear combination of this 1, 0, and this 0, 1. And I think we can see fairly easily the answer is indeed yes. What are my coefficients here? Well, the coefficients of 1, 0, it looks like it's gone one off to the left here, so it's got to be minus 1 if the original vector went 1 to the right. Going 1 to the left instead means I think it's negative. And then if the yellow vector goes 1 up, but the orange vector is 2 up, then I need to take twice the yellow vector. And so my coefficients are just minus 1 and 2. And there we have this linear combination. And then what's so amazing about the standard basis vectors is that this process always works. As in, if I take any vector, arbitrary vector, x1, x2, and I want to write it as a linear combination of the standard basis vector, say, some number times a 1, 0, and some number times a 0, 1, well, whatever it is, the x1 and the x2, I just plug the x1 and the x2 in. There's, there's nothing to be done. It's almost immediate. And so, Every vector is a linear combination of standard basis vectors, and so therefore the span of the standard basis vectors, all the possible linear combinations, is everything, is indeed equal to R2. So the standard basis vectors are so nice because any other vector can be written immediately, without any ever extra calculations or extra work, be written immediately as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors. By the way, if you're living in three dimensions, there's three different standard basis vectors, one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, one. If you're living in n dimensions, then there's n standard basis vectors, all the ways you can have a vector with zeros and only one, one of it. All right, so let's just summarize a little bit where we've been going. The first point is that when I look at vectors, there's two different operations on them. I can stretch them in scalar multiplication, or I can do this tip to tail vector addition. Then a linear combination is going to be the general way I could take all combinations of scalar multiplications and vector additions. The span is all the possible linear combinations of some list of vectors. If I ask what is the span of a list of vectors, it's all of the outputs when I take linear combinations of them. And then finally, the standard basis vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1, they are particularly nice because their span is everything, and everything can be written in a very trivial way as a linear combination of them. So we have two major questions remaining. The first is a computational one. If I have a list of vectors, I want to know what its span is. I want to know if a particular vector is in the span of some other vectors. How do I do that computation? Well, we're going to see that one in the next video. But then there's a deeper one. Remember how the standard basis vectors were really, really nice in that every vector could be written as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors? Well. Is that the only scenario, or is there a whole bunch of ones? And how do we find those? How do I find lists of vectors that have this property that every other vector can be written as a linear combination of them? This is going to be an integral part of our study of linear algebra, and we're going to spend a bunch of time on it going into the future.